this is the work that we must do to not only help our performances, but develop better running form and prevent your next big injury. Strength work enables the running. If I want to keep doing the thing that I love, which is running, I need to do the other things first. You know, it's almost like the preparatory work. This is Running For Real, the podcast for runners who know that for every runner's high, there are just as many lows. All those just missed PRs, easy runs that feel hard, injury blues, and more. Each week, we'll talk to running, health, and wellness experts about their highs, lows, and best advice to build our confidence. Running For Real is about being honest, being brave, and most of all, not feeling alone. And now here's our host, Tina Muir. Hello, my friends. Welcome to episode 204 of the Running For Real podcast. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am excited you are here. And friends, the last month I have been covering a lot of serious topics. I felt was really important to address the systemic racism, to kind of do my part in using my platform to unpack what is going on, to put us in the shoes of people who have been experiencing it for their whole lives, and really just to continue the conversation and do what I could to make it be something that we do talk about often and we are thinking about often, and it does start to change the way that you think and look around around your lives. That being said, I know that is I did quite a few heavier episodes in a row. I tried to make each of those episodes a focus on racism, but also a focus on these runners' lives, what they do do within their running life, but also within their everyday, day-to-day like life. Like we mentioned about Alex Will doing marketing. That was pretty cool to learn from her in that aspect. And I hope you enjoyed those episodes. Now, I thought for the next two weeks, we would do some lighter episodes, some some things that are more traditional running for real, kind of more of the, the fun stuff. And I couldn't think of anyone better to do that with than Jason Fitzgerald for today. And I am excited to bring him back on the show. This was one of the most popular guests ever when I went back and looked for the 200th episode. You loved listening to Jason. And so I thought I would bring him back on. And last time the episode was very much about kind of general running tips, primarily for for newer runners. But I thought, what could we talk about today that would be relevant to most people listening? And so I decided we'd been having a lot of questions about strength training, about exercising with no weights, about making things really realistic for you to be able to do from home and staying motivated. We cover a lot of the things just all about this quarantine situation that we are in, or even if you're not quarantined at this current time, you're not kind of living your life in a way that you normally would. Many of the gyms are not open or if they are, you're not comfortable with going. I'm definitely not at this point. So I just covered all these topics with Jason. We had all your questions. I didn't ask any of my own questions. It was all things that you had wondered about or people had mentioned to me. So I hope you enjoy that episode. I do also want to mention for those of you who are either coming up towards the end of your pregnancy, your postpartum, or you you have a baby who you can still wear in a wrap, I have created two, two pages on my website with strength training exercises and an entire routine for women who are in that situation. So if you do want to go check that out, you can go to tinamuir.com forward slash postpartum workout and you will be able to find that there. So tinamuir.com forward slash postpartum workout and you'll be able to find links to sign up to go get yourself two strength training workouts and also a working out with a baby workout. So Jason and I are going to cover the rest of us, those of you who are not postpartum and those of you who are just looking to stay at home and do your strength training and also stay motivated. So as I have rambled on long enough, let's go thank our sponsors and we'll be right to this episode with Jason Fitzgerald. Thank you to my friends Athletic Greens for sponsoring this episode of the Running For Real podcast. Now, this is the all-in-one daily drink to support better health and peak performance. Now, we know even with a balanced diet, it is difficult to cover all of your nutritional bases. That is where Athletic Greens will help. The daily drink is like nutritional insurance in a way for your body that's delivered straight to your door. It's developed from a complex blend of 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole food source ingredients. Athletic Greens is a greens powder engineered to help fill the nutritional gaps in your diet. Their daily drink improves your everyday performance by addressing the four pillars of health, energy, recovery, gut health, and immune support. 
Sounds pretty good, right? It's also packed with adaptogens for recovery, probiotics and digestive enzymes for gut health and vitamin C and zinc citrate for immune support. Athletic Greens is an easy all-in-one solution to help your body meet its nutritional needs. Their highly absorbable powder is diet friendly, whether you Whatever diet you are on, although you know I'm not a big fan of diets, you will be able to take this all in one drink just every morning. Now, I take it every single morning. It is the first thing I do. I've told you this many times. It's the first thing I do when I wake up in the morning. I stumble down to the kitchen, go get my jug of filtered cold water, pour it into my Athletic Greens glass, put a scoop of that in, give it a shake around and drink it down. That's the first thing I do. I love starting my day that way. It also gives me the confidence to know that even if things do not go that well from there as in terms of what I end up eating, I know that I at least have everything that I need from Athletic Greens and I'm so thankful to them for that. Now, I want to tell you, friends, when you try Athletic Greens through my podcast, they are also going to give you up to a year's supply of vitamin D3 slash K2 for free. As we know, we get vitamin D from the sun and it's often recommended as an important supplement by health experts, particularly in the winter months, which we are, believe it or not, starting to head towards. Athletic Greens vitamin D3 K2 combines these essential nutrients to help support the heart, immune system and respiratory system. You will get a one year supply of that product by visiting athleticgreens.com forward slash Tina to claim my special offer. You'll receive a free D3 K2 wellness bundle with your first purchase. That's up to one year. All you need to do is go to athleticgreens.com forward slash Tina and go check it out. Jason, welcome back to the Running For Real podcast. It was episode 68 and this is going to be episode 204. So it's been quite a while, but uh, I'm excited to have you back on the show. Well, I'm excited to be here and, and it's such a great honor to be back on for the second time. So thanks, mm-hmm. Tina. I actually don't have many repeat people. I'd say less than 10 people have been on twice, maybe even less than five. So you're in a very small group there. But looking through episodes, yours was one of the most popular ones of all time when I went through for the 200th. And so I thought, who better to bring on than you? And um, yeah, so I thought this episode we could kind of discuss. uh, You've had me on your show, uh, the Strength Running Podcast before to kind of answer people's questions, but also kind of just have a discussion, like two friends talking about something that other people wonder about. So I thought we would kind of do a version of that today. But before we get to that, just tell us, you know, how are things going with obviously living through a pandemic? Life has changed a little bit in 2020. So give us a bit of an update. Yeah, sure. Things are certainly a little different than they were (laughs) in February. Mm -hmm. Um, But you know, a lot of things have changed, uh, both on the running side of things, uh, things have changed for strength running, uh, and, and things have changed also just in my personal life. But, you know, the running side of things, I'm actually feeling good about my own running and I'm able to get in some, some great training right now. And I think without any races, you know, like a lot of runners right now, I can kind of focus on my weaknesses. I can focus on something that I really just enjoy doing rather than, you know, I'm formally doing some official training for something specific. And so, yeah, not having any races has given me some, some space in my own personal running. Uh, and then on the strength running side, you know, I've been able to publish more podcast episodes and, and record more video content actually. So, you know, in a lot of the ways I kind of, you know, thought, what does the running community need right now? Mm -hmm. And what am I good at? What can I actually do? And a big part of that is simply producing more helpful content for the broader running community. So that's what's new on the strength running side. Uh, And then on the personal side, you know, I (laughs) I think I'm with a lot of other people and just trying to make it through this really tough time. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, survive. Uh, I have three kids. And, you know, they're either in school or daycare. My wife is a teacher. So I'm feeling a little anxious and nervous about, you know, the fall and Mm. school starting up right now. But, you know, I feel like most people I'm kind of just in a waiting game and you take one day at a time and you try to make the best decisions you can for your family, even though it's really hard to make a good decision, you know, the environment we're in right now. Yeah. Well, and especially as things are changing so fast constantly. Uh, my husband is a track and field cross country coach and it feels like every day 
something's changed and a policy's changed. We are doing this. No, we're not doing this. We are going to do this. No, we're not doing this. So it's, uh, I think none of us kind of, we as runners like to have kind of a grip of things and control and we just don't have that with, with the majority of our lives. Now, a few things from what you said there. One, you mentioned about having, you know, using this as a time to work on your weaknesses. I'd love for you to expand on that a little bit because hearing you say that, I think a lot of people will look to you and think, oh, he always gets his stuff to prevent injuries and to keep himself strong and to, you know, the little things that we all know we should be doing, but many of us, definitely me included, are not good at it. Are you saying that sometimes you aren't the best at getting those things in? Oh boy. Mm -hmm. Uh, You're calling me out, Tina. (laughs) Yes, there is, you know, I would say a lot of the times I, I don't necessarily do the quote unquote right thing with my own running, Mm -hmm. even though I pretty much know the right thing to do. I know how to structure sound training. I don't necessarily do that all the time. And part of that is because, you know, I'm not necessarily trying to achieve my potential right now with my running, you know, with the three kids, with strength running, I just have a lot going on and I don't have time for the 90 miles a week, 80 miles a week that I was once doing, you know, back when I was 25 years old. So yeah, I'm certainly not doing the perfect thing in my training all the time. And, you know, the way I think about it, and I use this fun analogy a lot, a lot is that I'm sure if you found out that your dentist ate candy, sometimes that you wouldn't fire your dentist, you know, everyone, (laughs) we're all human here. Uh We all make poor decisions with our running. We all sometimes get lazy. Sometimes I don't do a warm up before I start running. I just make sure the first mile's really slow. Mm -hmm. So there's lots of things that I will uh, cut corners on, but now I'm I'm trying to be more consistent with my running, even though right now things are changing so quickly and, and sometimes that's really hard. I've always struggled with consistency as an adult runner with a family because mm. everything's changing and family issues come up and it's, it's just hard to get away for, say, a long run on the weekends when, mm. you know, I kind of want to be spending that time with my family. Mm. So I'm trying to be more consistent now and I'm trying to also think about what are the little things that would help me personally that are outside of running, you know, whether that's more mobility work. So for example, just the other day, I did a couple extra exercises that I haven't done in a couple years. And part of that is because, you know, the way that we've moved our house around, I just don't have the floor space anymore to do some of these exercises. Well, I moved the coffee table out of the way in our living room, started doing some exercises, and I realized I cannot move as well as I once did. Mm -hmm. So that's just a quick example of the fact that, yes, I'll sometimes shorten a routine or skip something or not do exactly what I'm supposed to do. But I'm trying to get back into it now because I know that I'm just going to feel better if I do the right thing. And have you noticed that within your running? I mean, you mentioned that running is going well. So can you see a visible or feel a visible difference? I do feel that when I am doing the right things and I'm just consistent with my running and I'm not going back and forth between inconsistency and great runs that I just tend to feel better on a day to day basis. And my pace, even at the same effort, tends to be a little bit faster. And so, yeah, I am experiencing that a little bit now. Uh, You know, my family and I went on a road trip in July and that certainly was a big knock to my consistency. Mm -hmm. I wasn't able to get in all those little things and the miles that I was hoping for. But since we've come home, I've been getting even more consistent. So, yeah, there's and that's one of the things I love about running. Right. You put in the work, you're going to experience the results. And, you know, I know that if I do that, I'm going to feel a lot better. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for sharing that. And then, you know, you having a business and working from home, you mentioned the kids being around just for the, I guess, resonating with people, just the understanding, the empathy that other people listening might be, might be having. How has it been, you know, having a business where you can work from home? Some people see that as a plus, oh, you didn't have to change your job at all, but how has it been uh, the past few months? Yeah, there's certainly pros and cons and drawbacks and benefits to having uh, kind of an odd job like I do. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I I am able to work, you know, in the evening. I am able to work early in the morning. And so I can do some things then when uh, demands on my time aren't as high. Mm -hmm. But it has certainly been challenging. You know, for the last year or so, I've been 
alone in the house, being able to work all day long. And that was just amazing. Tina, I'm, I can see you like shaking your head. I'm sure you're so jealous of having I, the whole I, house. Um, no. I literally have little green horns coming out of my head right now. <laughs> Yeah. So I, I certainly was a little spoiled and I got used to that. Now that all changed in March when my whole family st started staying at home mm -hmm. and my wife is a teacher. And so she was doing remote learning for her class. And so we were juggling some responsibilities um, and, and I would give her, you know, a big chunk of time in the morning. Uh, then I would run late morning and I would have pretty much the entire afternoon where I could focus on my work. So we made it work in that way. Uh, it wasn't perfect. You know, I, I was working a little bit less, not because I wanted to, but because I sort of had to. Mm -hmm. So it, it's been challenging. And, you know, I, it's funny, I just had a coaching call yesterday with uh, a guy I've been working with and, you know, he's, in his house, in his living room, we're, we're talking on zoom and I can hear his kids in the background. And it's just such a reminder that everyone is dealing with this. Mm -hmm. No one is in a perfect situation. We all have these setbacks and these annoyances in our day-to-day -day lives. So it's made me be a little bit more aware of the struggles that other runners are going through, you know, yeah. both in their, their personal lives, but in their professional lives, you know, working from home is hard, but that also is a privilege, you yeah. know, that means that you haven't lost your job. And yeah. so that's something that, you know, I've had to remind myself about. Uh, and then of course, the fact that running is just a little bit harder right now. You know, we don't have the support of our community. Mm. Uh, you can't go on group runs. You know, you can't go to the gym anymore. Uh, there's so many things that we don't have, not to mention races. So, you know, it's just made me, I think, be a little bit kinder to myself and to think about the the plight of other runners yes. when, you know, I might normally just be hard charging, go moving forward and, you know, trying to do everything I can to, to succeed. I'm glad you mentioned that about other runners because I definitely have experienced the same thing feeling before when I had friends who had full-time jobs like a, as an accountant or something and they'd say, oh, I, I didn't manage to get my run in. I just, I just couldn't do it. I had this, that and this for work. And, and I'd be like, oh, come on. If you were committed, you'd find a way. And now I look at it, I'm like, okay, I can absolutely see how there's, and there's moments where it's just not going to work and you just have to kind of let it go. And so I, I definitely feel like it's given me a lot more compassion for people who, well, now they have to do it from home, but just thinking about how, yeah, how lucky we were to be able to be working from home. Um, I don't have childcare right now and haven't since this started, but you know, did before. And I took that for granted that I did have those little windows of, of free and un uninterrupted time that I could just do my stuff, but then I still had time to get my runs and everything else in. So I'm glad you mentioned that. Uh, you also may, reminded me of, uh, do you remember seeing that BBC video where the, I think it was a reporter had his kids interrupt and it went viral. Yeah, Whereas it was now that's everyone. It, 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 oh yeah. It, it was at CNN. It would never have gone viral had it come out now because that is everyone's life now. Just kids interrupting, things going wrong, cats jumping on the screen, like whatever. So it's funny how our perspective has changed and we've all had to kind of tone down our professionalism a notch because it's just not realistic for you to kind of hold that standard. <laughs> so, right. Yeah. yeah. I remember that clip and it's so funny because, you know, like the kid comes in and then the nanny comes in yeah. and I think you're actually right. I think it was the BBC. Um, and then they did a follow up where like everyone was behind the camera and they talked about what it's like working from home. Mm -hmm. And now I'm like, that wouldn't even have been a thing mm -hmm. if it happened today, because mm -hmm. it's literally happening to everyone <laughs> all day long. Exactly. Exactly. So thank you. Thank you for sharing that and reminding me of that. Cause I'll have to go watch that again. Cause it was funny. Okay. So having three kids at home, this is a question for myself before we get onto the listener questions, but it reminded me having three kids at home, you mentioned getting a few miles in there. You mentioned you're working a bit at night. Do you have any kind of morning routine, something that you set up for yourself to kind of get yourself on the right trajectory trajectory? Because with kids, it's very easy to let them kind of dictate your day. If you wake up when they wake up, you're kind of already behind. So have you got yourself set up with anything that has helped you to kind of be successful in organizing your day the way you want it to be. Well, within reason. 
Right. You know, I probably do some things wrong when it comes to productivity, those kinds of things. You know, everyone loves talking about morning routines. I probably don't have the best morning routine. You know, I, I probably wake up anywhere between 630 and 7 a.m., mm-hmm. either when my kids wake up or with my kids, you know, kind of at roughly the same time. And, you know, the morning is really about getting the kids ready to leave. You know, at this point, they're they're either back to school or back in daycare. And, you know, I help my wife get them ready. They leave around I don't know, 715 or 730. And then I'm home until about 815 with my oldest daughter. And, you know, that time is really just you know, have a cup of coffee, some breakfast, help her get ready. Usually I can do a little bit of work. You know, there's some some extra downtime in there while she's getting ready, but I don't have a very formal morning routine. You know, my day really starts once I drop my daughter off at school and she'll usually ride her bike and I'll run next to her. And then after I drop her off, I I continue on and finish up my run. And once I'm done with that, you know, maybe it's 930 or so, then my day really starts. And I have about 930 to 330 to do what I want, you know, and, and almost all of that is is just strength running work related work. Mm-hmm. But no, I, I'm probably not the best person for like some great morning routine that <laughs> gets you started with some affirmations, <laughs> journaling and meditation. Uh, I've admittedly never done that. Would you Um, like to get to the point where you're doing that stuff or or does that just not interest you? I would love, you know, an hour to myself in the morning so I could, you know, wake up and get my day started the way that I would like to. But I think if I propose that to my wife, I might get some choice words. (laughs) Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. So speaking of uh, your wife, I, so I had Chloe three months ago and I was so paranoid because of what happened to you with your third child. I can't, I'm sorry. I can't remember if you had a boy or a girl third. Eli, boy. Eli. Okay. Um, so I'm not going to make you tell the story again, but Jason, you delivered, right? You were the one that delivered. Well, I helped. My wife and I both delivered yes. my, my son in the front seat of our car, yes. right in front of the hospital. We got there. We just simply <laughs> didn't get in the actual building. Yes. And I remember you talking about that last time around, but I was so paranoid that was going to happen to me. I just couldn't stop thinking about it. I ended up, my friend who looked after Bailey, my uh, firstborn, while I was uh, in the hospital, she came over another day before that in the middle of the night because I was paranoid that it was happening and it wasn't. And then I was like, actually, this is a false alarm. So she went home. But I just was so, I couldn't stop thinking about it. So um, yeah, I I, I didn't end up delivering in the hospital, but it was only four hours total in labor. So I feel like I could have easily been that way. But I want to thank you for giving me the nudge to move to the hospital as soon as I could, because I think otherwise I would have been risking that by saying, I'm going to stay at home until the last minute. So, yes. <laughs> well, yeah, my my son's um, birth happened very quickly. My wife's labor was 34 minutes. Yes, so and- crazy. Yeah. From 1104 to 1138 PM. It's, it's funny. Like I'll never forget those numbers. You know, they stick in my head kind of like my mile PR Yeah, and you know, that, that was a fast labor and, um, it was, uh, an expensive car detail. (laughs) I'm sure. Okay. Moving on. So before we get onto the questions, just as we may have some new runners listening, because the one benefit of this time has been a, a boom in runners, well, people basically having no other choice, but then finding, actually, I quite like this and joining the running world. So for any new runners that are listening, what would you tell them as they begin their journey kind of as a runner? Well, I think first and foremost, it does get a lot easier. So if you're only a week or two or three into this whole running thing and it's feeling difficult every run is a struggle. Your body might feel a little sore, a little beat up. Uh, I, I think it, it was very heartening for me to experience the, the, the experience of getting over that initial hump when you first start running, because your, your body's not used to it. If you don't have experience running, your body's not used to that kind of impact, uh, that kind of movement. 
and just being on your feet for, for that amount of time. So it does get a lot easier. So stick with it, stay consistent, be very gradual with any kind of increases in both your mileage or even just the intensity of your running, you know, how fast you're running. And then also, you know, uh, you're probably not gonna be surprised and I say this, but, you know, do some strength training mm-hmm. so that you stay healthy so that you can just strengthen your muscles and all your connective tissues mm-hmm. so that, you know, you're just reducing your likelihood of getting an injury. So as long as you're, you know, keeping things relatively easy at the beginning, you're staying consistent, uh, be kind to yourself, you know, don't put too many hardcore performance expectations on yourself right from the beginning. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then do some of the other little things like strength training that will help you stay healthy. Yes. Thank you. Great. And we're going to go on to the strength training in just a minute. I want to add just a few more things for anyone uh, being one. If you kind of fall off and miss a few days, just get back out there when you can. I think new runners, it's very easy to be like, oh, I've missed two days. I I just can't do this. I I can't be consistent with anything. I can't keep anything up. I'm useless don't do that. We all have days where we have, we have days off, we have unexpected things come up, especially right now. So give yourself a break and just start again or not from the beginning, but carry on as you were, even if it's a week or two off, go back a few steps, but then, you know, keep going again. And then secondly, I just want to say when you hit a plateau, which you will, you're going to be all excited about running right now, but you will hit a point where it starts getting harder. The motivation is gone maybe your times are slowing down. That is the time to start seeking out people like Jason, maybe like myself, other experts to kind of help you get to the next step because it's never going to feel as joyful and simple and you're not, never going to progress the way that you do at the very beginning. So keep that in mind and then know that there are plenty of resources out there when, when that point comes. Anything else you'd add? I think I'd like to add too that that next step, you know, the way that you break through your performance plateau, you know, whatever you're experiencing that you'd like to improve upon, it's probably not as difficult as you think it mm. will be. So someone with some experience like Tina, who who really knows the ins and outs of training, probably would be able to just take a look at your training and say, oh, you can improve this. Let's add this into your training. Let's actually slow you down on this day. And there's probably a lot of opportunities for improvement. So, you know, don't ever hesitate for reaching out and asking for some help because it's it's usually, you know, an email away or something like that. And you'll get some strategies that will make a whole big difference. Thank you to Trexmith for sponsoring this episode of the Running For Real podcast. Now, my friends, I told you about the previous coupon code. We have now changed that. So for those of you who have been a fan of Trexmith for way longer than I have from the very early days of the brand, I know there's many of you listening who are those first supporters of the brand. I do now have a coupon code for you. I know you were feeling left out before. So if you use code for real 15, that's F-O-R-R-E-A-L 15, you can get $15 off your first purchase of $75 or more. Now, I've told you about how much I love the clothes. I've told you about how I'm always wearing the Twilight tank, the Horizon tank, the session shorts all day long in just my daily life so that, they, that I can switch from mom mode to exercise mode really quickly. They're really cute clothes. They're simple and just really effective, made of nice materials. I've told you about all that stuff, but I've been starting to tell you about some of the other things Tracksmith is doing beyond just kind of those basic being a brand that provides products for us kind of things. They have actually now created a run commute set of clothes, which are fantastic. They're just, I love the idea that Tracksmith is encouraging people to run, to get from point A to point B, as it kind of should be, rather than us driving to the gym or driving to work when it's not very far away. Now, as people are starting to get back to work and starting to travel more to their workplaces that are locally, this is a great time for you to be using their Run Commute collection. They have thought really hard about this stuff. It is functional. It is great quality as with all the Trexmith stuff. And I really think you're going to enjoy it. If you are someone who runs to work or has the potential to run to work, this is the great opportunity for you to give it a try. So be sure to check out their run commute selection of clothes there. 
And then also the amateur support program. I don't think I've mentioned this to you on on the podcast yet, but they are now doing a support program for people who are going for the US Olympic track and field trials. They will give people a quarterly gear stipend, a membership to their hair AC club, mentorship, competition support, and more. That's just for people who are up and coming, those athletes who are well on their way. And it's those who are focusing on the US trials and are just, you know, putting in the work every day. The people who are digging down deep to find the time within their own lives, but still trying to work a full-time job or have a family or whatever. I really think this is fantastic what they are doing. And uh, I think you should read up a bit more on that if you have not already. Now, one final reminder, you can get $15 off your first purchase of $75 or more by using code 4REAL15. That's $15 off your first purchase of $75 or more using code 4REAL15. Don't ever hesitate for reaching out and asking for some help because it's it's usually, you know, an email away or something like that. And you'll get some strategies that will make a whole big difference. Agreed. Thank you. All right. So let's go on to the strength training aspect. Actually, sorry, we have a fun question from Richard before we get on, which is who wins a race between you and Matt Fitzgerald? Matt Fitzgerald, for sure. <laughs> uh, Matt Fitzgerald is does not have three children and is training <laughs> like a madman right now. Yeah. He's uh, running a ton. He's cycling. He's, I mean, he's, he's so into it right mm -hmm. now. And, you know, I, I was certainly there five years ago, uh, but I've, I've fallen off the wagon a little bit. And at this point I, I actually did razz him a little bit. I did a live podcast with Matt Fitzgerald about one of his recent books and we went out and got some food afterward and uh, I gave him a hard time because he trained with an elite group, the Northern Arizona elite team, yep. and was able to PR his marathon like incredibly. He ran, I think, 239 mm -hmm. and ended up beating my PR by about like seven seconds. So <laughs> I, I, I had told him that he needed to train with elite guys to, to finally catch up to my yes. PR. But now that he's there, he would definitely smoke me in any race. OK, well, thank you. We we now have a. Uh... If you're saying it, then we can crown Matt as the, the faster Fitzgerald for now. We'll see about for the future. Now. But OK, thank you for to Richard for that one. OK, so the majority of the questions were all pretty much the same thing. Exercising at home with no weights, strength training plans to do at home. Uh, and then I think the best way to kind of sum it up with this would be if you had $100 to spend, what would you buy, borrow or repurpose? to create some semblance of a home strength center. If you have to work out at home, what are the few things worth buying if they are available? Because it is hard to get a lot of equipment right now. And what can you fake with bags of pet food, jugs of milk, water, sliders made of socks? And Jackie wanted to know that, but it kind of sums up the majority of the questions that I had coming in. Basically, how do we do this at home with the resources available? Yeah, it's a great question because, you know, obviously right now, so many of those resources that we use to get strong simply aren't available, not just the weights, but the gym itself and all the rack and all mm -hmm. of that extra equipment. And, you know, I, I think first and foremost, if you're not a gym rat, you're not someone with a ton of weightlifting experience, you know, you can do a lot with simple body weight exercises. Yeah. And, you know, uh, 10 or 15, maybe 20 minutes after each run going through a series of movements where, you know, you're, you're strengthening the hips and the glutes through squats, through leg raises, um, through all sorts of different exercises, uh, that, that focus on those muscles that, that is a great way to start. There's also, uh, you know, a lot of routines that I have on strength running, you know, you can kind of just search strength routines and, yeah, I'll put and you'll the, get I'll some, put some like, links in as well. Yes. Those are my favorite because what they do is they kind of take the focus off of the exercises and really put it on the routine. Mm -hmm. So there is a progression of exercises. They generally start simple. They get a little bit more advanced as you go. They'll start more general and then become more specific to running as you go. And so I like this idea of routines because you don't have to say, okay, what six or eight or 10 exercises am I going to do today? You just say, okay, I'm going to do Tina's core workout and it's already laid out for you. You know what to do. Mm -hmm. So that is an easy way to do it. 
And then in terms of like other equipment, man, if I had a hundred dollars to spend on a home gym, I would, I would want to see if I could buy, if I wanted it as close to what I could get in a gym as possible, I might look to see if I could actually buy a barbell with some plates, really? even, even if it was only two plates. So if I couldn't actually increase the weight at all, I would still want a barbell and some plates because that allows you to do some great exercises. It's great for mobility because you have to go through the proper range of motion mm, sure. with some weight. So that's really great. But if you don't have the space for that, you know, if you're in an apartment, that's virtually impossible. Mm -hmm. The probably my second favorite implement that you could buy is a kettlebell because the kettlebell can be used for strength work. It can be used for a more metabolically demanding workout if you do a lot of kettlebell swings. Uh, so it can be that, you know, more aerobic metabolic type of stress. What kind of weight would you be talking about with that kettlebell? Like, I, I know obviously it's going to depend on the person, but would that be kind of a uh, a mid range, you know, for, I'd say the average woman, like 15 to 20 pounds, 15 to 25 for the average man, like 30 to 35, or you took in like a heavier one, what kind of, so one? I use a 30 pound kettlebell mm -hmm. and I'm like a 130 pound guy. I'm not very big. So I think, you know, somewhere between 20 and 40 pounds for most people would be appropriate. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'll never forget a conversation I had with a trainer when I first started learning how to use a kettlebell. And he told me that it's actually better to have a weight that is slightly too heavy for you than one that's just too light mm -hmm. because the heaviness of the weight is actually going to restrict your ability to move it around. And that's going to keep it closer to your body. It's going to keep it so that you're not just wildly swinging, you know, a very light weight around, which you could get hurt doing. So as long as you're your form is good. So if you're, you're unsure, you know, certainly err on something that's not too heavy for you, but you do want something that has some weight to it, something that gives you that good resistance. And you can do everything from Turkish get-ups to kettlebell swings to squats and deadlifts. There's so many options with just a single kettlebell. Uh, so I like that as a fairly cheap strength tool. And I think you can buy most kettlebells for, you know, under $50 or, or maybe mm -hmm. slightly over. Yeah. Thank you. And you mentioned there about doing things after you run. So you would say for the majority of people now, just based on what we've said about how life is right now, about not having the gym right now, it's almost better to break what would be a what, you know two by one hour gym block into short mini workouts, but do them maybe most days of the week. Would you say that's, is that what you meant? Yeah, I think that's fair. Um, especially if you can't get into the gym, you know, let's just get in some strength on most days. And the great thing about those body weight routines is that they're not as stressful as weightlifting in the gym. So, you know, you can't get in the gym and lift weights every day. If you're a runner, you're not a bodybuilder. You don't really need to do that, but doing a body weight exercise, it's, it's just a lot easier. You're not lifting any more weight than your own body weight. So you're not really going to be too sore from these kinds of exercises and workouts. Now, if you are, I would say, well, that means we need to be even more consistent with it because I would say that most runners shouldn't be sore at all after these routines. And if you are getting sore, it probably means that there's some sort of, you know, weakness or, you know, lack of consistency with strength training there in your program. So, you know, we should just continue to do more of it so that you're not really too sore. Yes. Great. Thank you. And then just a, another side shoot of this. What about an alternative uh, strength workout that can be done at a park outdoors for those who don't have access to a gym and don't really have the space or time to do it inside? Yeah. So if you're at a park, it's great because you can start using some other things around for, you know, extra strength implements or tools, you know, some of some really simple ones that I love, you know, you can find either the monkey bars at a playground mm -hmm. or uh, a tree and you can start doing pull-ups or chin-ups. I use the benches here in my local park to do a variety of step ups, which are phenomenal exercise for runners. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a single leg exercise, you know, it works that a very similar motion to running. And so not only can you use those certain resources out in a park, but I think you can also just do all of the normal body weight exercises that you might be able to do at home. Um, the other great thing about it is that 
you know, there's no ceiling in a park. So if you, if you live in an apartment or your house just has low ceilings, you can't do anything overhead. Mm. Now you can actually do overhead things. You can lift weight over your head, um, whether that's a medicine ball or a kettlebell or something like that. It just gives you a wider flexibility to do more things. Yes. Okay. Thank you. And then, uh, just one other thing you mentioned about the bench, Uh, another thing you could add, I mean, this is kind of more of a advanced thing. So I wouldn't mention it if you were, if this is your first time strength training, but a lot of the plyometrics kind of stuff, uh, jumping up, jumping down, as long as you're landing correctly and, you know, really watching your form, those things you can do on a bench or on steps nearby and things like that. So uh, a few more things to add there. Okay. So related to that again, how about staying motivated for at-home strength training? Uh, Sarah says, this is going to sound dorky, but ideas for organizing stuff like dumbbell stability balls, if you don't have a ton of space. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I honestly don't know what to say about motivation. You know, we talked about how I don't mm. necessarily do the right thing in my training all the time. And it's probably for that exact reason. You know, I don't always have the motivation to do a 15 or 20 minute strength workout after my run. So it can be really hard. I've always found comfort in the fact that this is the work that we must do to stay healthy. This is the work that we must do to not only help our performances, but, you know, develop better running form and prevent your next big injury. So the way I see it, the strength work enables the running. And if I want to keep doing the thing that I love, which is running, I need to do the other things first. You know, it's almost like the preparatory work that and allows you to then go running. But yeah, in terms of space saving stuff, that that's a great question. I'm not really sure. You know, they, they sell some really cool, uh, it's almost like a little tower and it mm. has different hooks and storage uh, places on it where you could, you know, uh, hang a yoga mat. You can put a medicine ball on there. There's space for a couple of dumbbells. So there's things like that that you can have, but you know, you can also just shove it under the couch. You know, let's keep things simple. What the stability ball? How big is your couch? <laughs> or uh, uh, <laughs> a couple dumbbells for sure. Yeah, yeah you probably good. have to deflate the the stability ball. <laughs> I was going to say, unless you have like a giant couch that you're not telling me about. One thing I have seen in some like PT places with uh, stability balls is getting a piece of PVC pipe. It's mostly PVC pipe. The really thin, the small ones, like a thin hole PVC pipe and then putting it in the corner of the room. So then you can throw a stability ball up there. And that obviously just is a stability ball because that's the only thing light enough. But as that is the biggest, you know, space thing around, you can throw that up there and then it's out of the way. Obviously it doesn't look great. I wouldn't recommend doing that in your dining room or living room, but if you have some kind of space somewhere, but the you don't want the ball bouncing around all over the place. I've, I think that's a, a good solution as well. Okay. So with motivation for someone who, and I'm saying this speaking from experience, it's kind of easy to say, ah, you know, I'll probably be okay. Yeah. I know I need to do two strength things a week or I should do a bit more, but I'll do it tomorrow. And then it gets put off. Any further things you would say if the injury kind of temptation isn't working because this person hasn't typically got injured a lot. So it's hard to use that as a, as a reason. Anything else? Racking your brain. It's a great question. You know, it's the million dollar question. You know, how do you mm. improve adherence to the things that we know are good for runners? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I've certainly appealed to the logic of runners. You know, this is going to make me a better runner. Therefore I should do it. Um, you could also appeal to runner's vanity, you know, strength training is, yeah. is going to improve your body composition. And if you want to look good without any clothes on, you know, <laughs> your strength training is going to help with that. So there's a couple different ways that you could appeal to runners. Um, you know, I, I really like the fact that, you know, feeling strong makes you feel very empowered too. Yeah. And so I would give yourself a couple of weeks to get over that initial hump. Just like if you were to start running, there's that initial hump get over that initial hump and just take note of how you feel. If you can just do it for say a month, you're going to feel stronger. You're going to feel more capable. You're going to feel like your posture is better, likely going to give you some confidence. And if you stop, you know, you might backtrack and you might not feel as strong and confident. And 
you know, that, that's almost like you're, you're missing something that you once had. And, you know, that, that always gave me a little bit more motivation to do the strength work because I just liked the way that it made me feel that's as true. well. Yeah. You know, the same way that if you're in excellent shape with running, you can bound up the stairs and it's not a problem. Mm -hmm. Someone asks you to help them move a bunch of things and you're not just totally wiped out afterwards. It gives you a certain energy for life that I really like. And mm -hmm. so I look at strength training the same way. It's empowering. It's going to help my running. It's probably going to make me look better. So what's not to love? There you go. Perfect answer there. Right. So uh, David wants to know what training principles, running or strength, have you changed your views on over the year? I used to think runners didn't need to do any strength training. And well, that's a big change th then. <laughs> that is obviously a huge change. Yeah. If you were to ask me 20 years ago, you know, do I need to get in the weight room? I'd be like, your legs are fine. You're getting plenty strong with all the running, all the hill workouts. And, you know, you can certainly develop a fair amount of strength with just running, but your training is still incomplete. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I really doubt there's any high level pro runner who's not being consistent with some form of strength training. And I think that's very instructive to us recreational runners who, you know, want to get the most out of our bodies, uh, who want to achieve the most we can with our running. And, uh, you know, the strength training is, is definitely part of that. Mm -hmm. So I've certainly, you know, gotten, m m changed my mind with that. Uh, I've become much less into static stretching, something that I used to do all the time, but I was also getting hurt all the time. Mm -hmm. And and when I started thinking, if I'm stretching to stay healthy, why am I getting hurt all the time? I'm doing all this stretching. You know, I want to be loose and flexible, right? Well, I learned that part of the reason that I was still getting hurt is because static stretching doesn't really have much of an impact on your ability to stay healthy, but strength training does. And so those two evolutions kind of went hand in hand. I've replaced a lot of the stretching with strength training and it's far and away oh, a more yeah. productive approach. Yeah. Great. Thank you. What about you, T? What have you changed your mind about? I don't, oh, I wasn't expecting that one back. Um, hmm. I think for me, the biggest thing that comes to mind, it's funny, when, whenever I've answered questions with you and with anyone pretty much, I feel like my answer is always basically before I was like this mad person who was so intense and could like, I don't know, like I just seem all my answers end up being to relax, like to, to basically take a chill pill. So I would say again, that is my answer in that I think before I felt you had to be finishing every workout on your hands and knees, almost falling to the ground. And if you didn't, what was the point? Because you're never going to, I felt you had to run your absolute hardest on the hard days to get the most out of yourself on race day. Because if you can't do it in training, how are you going to do it in race? Now I would actually say the opposite. You want to get to maybe 80 to 90% on those hard days, leaving that final 10% to uh, race day. So you can always get one more rep or one more something out of your workouts. You always walk away with a little bit less. And the same with easy days, I would say I probably would have said, oh, I should be running at this pace. Whereas now I would say, you know what, I'm going to run whatever pace feels right. And I don't care what that is. So I think all of mine would revolve around um, just taking it, not taking it so seriously and strength training too. I was very much in the kind of get it done mindset with strength training. I would do it watching TV. I just kind of do my dumbbell curls with five pound weights and not really be, you know, do 20 reps because I felt that's what I was doing. Whereas now I think I would again, slow down, do maybe 12 exercises rather than 25, but make them be uh, a higher weight, more concentrated, uh, focus on form, all those kind of things. So I think for me, the overarching theme would be quality over quantity. So, yeah, I think that would be my answer. Thank you. That's for a asking. good answer. <laughs> and I, I would say that I think uh, even though I wouldn't say my mind changed about those things, the way that I approached my own running mm. and 
that with my clients what is exactly that as well. You know, let's let, we don't have to hammer every easy run. You know, if, if your easy run is slower than the easy pace range that I think is appropriate, then that's okay. Maybe you're just having a tough day. And so I think a lot of that is just perspective as you get older, you have more years of experience in the sport and, and you just are, are kinder to yourself and to your athletes with, you know, how, how much you adhere to, to the plan, you know, as it's written. Now today for my black owned business that I'm going to focus on to highlight and support and just bring awareness and attention to, I'm excited to tell you about Run Girl, which was suggested to me by Aaron and Joshua Potts during their episode or after their episode, they told me about this and I wanted to give them some time to bring together some talking points some things that I could tell you about. I absolutely admire what they are doing over there. So I want to tell you uh, Run Girl is a digital and event platform for black women that uses running as a means to impact wellness for our community. They're sharing and celebrating their diverse stories of our community to change the narrative about what it means to be a distance runner. Now, I love how they started, which is that they were all friends connected through running in Washington, D.C. You know, as you know, the running community is pretty small and the running community of black women is even smaller so they were able to find each other and in their conversations they realized how narrow the definition of what a runner was white men in split shorts and it's kind of true right they didn't see themselves in the distance running landscape in media and marketing materials online but they saw a lot more black women running from distances from 5ks to ultra marathons they wanted to change that narrative about what it means to be a runner so why did they call it Run Girl? Well, it's hard to be what you can't see. They wanted to expand on what people envision when they hear distance runner. There's a huge gap in the mainstream media about what it looks like to be a runner. And they wanted to close that gap by telling the stories of black women distance runners, providing resources to encourage these women to start and grow and build the community that supports them. And they wanted to do this, especially when it came to younger generations, expanding the options of what's possible in running and understanding the importance of being able to make informed and healthy choices earlier in their in their lives. So they have an online platform which offers resources, content covering topics including nutrition, product reviews, training, mental and physical barriers to running, and wellness and self-care. They host experiences that bring their digital content to in-person conversations, including their signature Miles and Mimosas, which is a 5K run, brunch and chat, they have special guests and influencers, brand partnerships, fellowship, and of course, lots of miles. So I wanted to tell you just a little bit more about Run Girl. Their goals are to increase the number and representation of black women in distance running, including everyone from 5K to Boston Marathon qualifiers to ultra marathoners. They want to encourage inclusive conversations around distance running, fitness, and overall wellness, and to encourage young black women to make healthy, informed choices early and often. And finally, to positively impact health outcomes for black women using running as their vehicle. So I think you should go check out Run Girl. I have really enjoyed kind of getting to know them, getting to understand what they are all about. And you can go to R-U-N-G-R-L dot C-O. That's R-U-N-G-R-L dot C-O to go check them out. And I just wanted to let you know a little bit more about them. I hope you enjoyed this episode's Black Owned Business Highlight of the Week. If your easy run is slower than the easy pace range that I think is appropriate, then that's okay. Maybe you're just having a tough day. And so I think a lot of that is just perspective as you get older, you have more years of experience in the sport and, and you just are, are kinder to yourself and to your athletes with, you know, how, how much you adhere to, to the plan, you know, as it's written. So new runners listening, if you're still in here, that's another piece of advice to learn for you as well, because don't make the mistakes we've made. <laughs> uh, okay. So Suzanne asked if you're time st starved, I do rotating shift work, single parent training for a marathon. How do you fit in a decent strength training program? She says I do four by 12 minute body weight, strength, mobility workouts per week alongside my running. Is that enough? Now we kind of answered that in the previous question, but is there anything else you would add to that? Yeah. I mean, I, I think that's, I mean, that, that's, that's a fair amount of strength work. And, you know, uh, I, I think I mentioned finishing your run with 10 to mm. 20 minutes of, of runner specific strength work. You know, I think that's, that's a good minimum. And, 
you have to, again, be kind to yourself. You know, Mm -hmm. she's has a demanding job. She's working long hours and it sounds like she's doing everything she can. Whenever I talk to runners about this issue, I would always say, look, if you're unable to get in any strength training, I actually want you to run a little bit less so that you have an extra 20, 30 minutes throughout the week to get, get in that strength work. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, whether your mileage is 30 miles a week or 33 miles a week, your body really doesn't know the difference between that very much. But if you take that extra three miles, which might account for about 30 minutes of total time, and you split that up into two 15 minute strength sessions, Mm -hmm. That is enough to give you that strength stimulus so that you're not predisposing yourself to injuries. And so I I think that is a good strategy for people who are really strapped for time. You know, look at your schedule. If if you can sacrifice a a couple miles here and there in the interests of getting in that strength work, uh, I think that's a fair compromise because in the long term, you'll probably be able to run more because you're not going to miss time Mm -hmm. with all the niggles and and little injuries. Yeah. And I would just add for that, uh, I mean, you, you kind of said this anyway, but Suzanne doing shift work, being a single parent and training for a marathon, that is a lot of stress on your body, your mind, your emotional state, everything. So I would let go at least during this period of your life of any intensity. And I have to hit this pace. I have to hit this goal. I have to really go for this. Because as much as this might be hard to hear and it's maybe not what you want to hear, it's just not going to be realistic for you to really go for all three of those. Um, Unless being a single parent, you have a lot of help through some manner at some point. But just be kind to yourself because you're going through a lot. So keep that in mind. Okay, so one more. I think we've got time for one more here. Uh, What are some of your favorite off day or recovery day activities? Which is uh, Tessaly. So let's differentiate between maybe off day (laughs) activities for fun and then, you know, maybe like some cross training that might actually have some direct transfer of fitness. You mean you don't love to go pool running on your or just for fun? Oh, man. As someone who has spent hours and hours in the pool day after day for weeks, no, I don't love pool running. (laughs) It is one of the most boring activities. I'd rather run on a treadmill. And that's saying a lot. No, I love, uh, you know, I just going for a walk, I think is one of the, one of the best things that you can do. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it gets blood flow going. It's easy. Anyone can do it. Uh, you can bring a friend or a family member, you know, bring your spouse and you actually have a good conversation. So you can accomplish a lot of things at once. Cycling is something that I really have gotten into over the last couple Mm -hmm. of years. You know, I love bringing my bike out into the mountains here outside of Denver and, you know, kind of punishing myself on some of the big hills and, and thrilling myself on some of the big downhills. So that's really fun. Uh, just make sure that it's not too stressful because you can certainly, uh, you know, runners have a a need for speed sometimes. And if you're just hammering on a bike on all your off days, Mm -hmm. you know, you want to give your body time to rest and recover. But I, I like cycling because, it's more specific to running. Uh, and it's also fun. And I like the walking because it's just easy. You can go for a quick stroll. Uh, I think it's just great for the healing process to get some blood flow and get moving, uh, with your legs. So I think that's great, but you know, we talked about strength training. I don't really think that's like an off day activity. Uh, that's something that should be just part of your training, uh, ideally doing it on a day that you're also running, I think. But walking and cycling are probably my two favorite. Uh, do you do you have an offbeat one? Are you like an elliptigo rider, Tina? I have an elliptigo. My husband uses it at, at most days of the week. However, admittedly, I'm not the best at doing it because of what you mentioned. I really find it hard to go easy. I just I can't help but pound myself into the ground when I use it. So. That's not really a good idea for me. I don't, I don't know if I really, I'm honestly quite lazy otherwise. So I don't really have anything like I'm, I, I, if I live near some mountains or something, I would love to go for a hike. But even then I feel like I would count that as my exercise for the day. Uh, I don't really, wouldn't really say that I do any kind of activity for kind of enjoyment. Um, I'm actually reading a book right now called Rushing Women's Syndrome which is about women who are like, go, go, go all the time. 
And so I'm trying to actually go the other way and trying to remove some of my hobbies and activities that I do so that I can have more time to actually just be still. So right now, no, I don't. I mean, having having a newborn and a two year old, not that I have any time for, for thinking about those things right now, but I would like to get to the point when they're on a more consistent schedule that I can go do some hobbies that are away from my house. Um, but yeah, right now, not, not really much is coming to mind, to be honest. Sending voice memos to friends is probably my, my biggest activity. Any other hobbies you'd mention or things you enjoy? Um, I, I'm really into, this is going to sound weird. I'm really into house plants. I have like 25 plants. Behind, I can see two behind you. Yeah. You probably can see way more than that. I have about 25 in my home office. Okay. I'm starting to move them out into other areas of the house. Um, a little bit hesitantly because of my young children. <laughs> so I kind of consider my office as like the nursery. Uh, yeah. So I love, I love just I got two new plants last weekend. I'm, I'm kind of obsessed with it. Huh. Um, but just, you know, speaking to your point about not rushing around trying to do things, I try to take one weekend day and usually it's a day where I don't run and I don't have any formal exercise for the day. Mm -hmm. And it's still a day where I'm playing with my kids. You know, maybe I mow the lawn and I go to the grocery store. You know, I, I have a nice little Saturday, I go to home Depot or something. Mm -hmm. And you know, I still get in like 12,000, 15,000 steps on these days because I'm just going all day long and doing all these other things. Mm. And, and so I almost like the idea of disconnecting from technology, having yeah. a day where I'm just doing family and home stuff all day long. I'm not worried about exercise, but at the same time, I'm still being active all day long. So mm. there's no guilt whatsoever with me taking the day off of running or not getting in any, you know, cross training or strength training. It's just like, I can just slow down a little bit, focus on my chores, my mm -hmm. family being disconnected for the day. And I found that it's very mentally soothing for me because I can, you know, normally I'm just checking social media and I'm in my inbox and, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about the podcast or, or some training program I'm working on. There's yeah. all, there's so many things that I have my hand in. And for one day a week, to just disconnect from all that, I think is very productive for the brain. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, yeah, could, could not agree more, although I'm not very good at doing it. Uh, I did take, I don't know if you know this, but after I had Chloe, I took, I deleted social media off everything for a month and it was amazing. I would probably have gone on like that if I could, but it just isn't realistic with kind of same as you with the, the work that we do, but it was so nice to have that brain space back again. And I found I had lots of ideas and just great things came through that I hadn't given myself the space to think about because it had been so easy to yeah, pick up your phone uh, when you have a free moment. So trying to keep, keep the things I learned in my life, but it's definitely not easy. And I wouldn't say I'm the best at uh, taking a full day away from things, although definitely better than I used to be. So Jason, anything else you would like to say to listeners about this time, kind of getting through things and just as they move about the next few months, particularly not having any races that are 100% going forward, anything else you'd like to say? Well, I think one of the themes of a lot of our discussion today was slowing down, mm. being a little bit kinder to yourself, not being so anxious about being perfect. And I think that is just a great theme for not just new runners, those mm -hmm. of us who are, you know, first getting into the sport, but also all of us during mm -hmm. this time when we are having extra adversity just heaped on us day after day, whether that's professional responsibilities, whether that's, you know, things going on with your family. So I think if we can all just, you know, slow down, be a little bit kinder to ourselves, uh, you know, that's just a great approach. And uh, I, I think in the grand scheme of things, it will make us into more resilient runners, because as long as we can maintain our running habit without worrying about being perfect, without necessarily cramming in a bunch of hard training for an upcoming race, you know, we'll come out of this 
likely with some more mental resiliency, with uh, a recommitment to the sport of running. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm sure the entire running community is going to have a fit as soon as, you know, there's a vaccine and races are, you know, popping back up up again. And everyone's just going to be so excited. And there's going to be group runs. I mean, I'm getting excited just thinking about it. And when it actually happens, the whole community is just going to be out in the streets running around high five and giving each other hugs. (laughs) And so let's just make it there. Let's Let's just get to that point healthy with our sanity, hopefully most of our sanity, yes. we'll, we'll lose some of it. And, and then just look forward to that day where COVID will just be in the rearview mirror. Do you think there will be a day though? Cause I can't see that. I feel like it's going to slowly, I feel like the normal we knew before has gone. And I don't know if, if I personally don't know if we'll ever reach a day where we're like, it's gone. I don't know. So maybe that's me. I'm an optimist. Maybe. Yeah, I I yeah. usually am. But with this, I, I don't know, this year, I've kind of been very much struggling with that. So um, I'm going to hope that you are right with that answer there, that we can kind mm-hmm. of. And even if we aren't, even if even if I am right with what I say, that doesn't mean that we don't kind of celebrate the things along the way. Now, group runs are back on again. Now, races are back on again. Yeah, they're a little bit different, but they're still it's still something. So I think. I can at least learn my, from myself that gratitude along the way, along the journey back to some re- semblance of normal is, is all I can, all I can do is try and appreciate it. So Jason, thank you so much for coming on the show today to answer some questions. I have plenty more. Uh, so maybe we'll have to do another one down the road, but I appreciate all that you do tell people where they can find out more about you and, and learn more for the future. Oh, thanks, Tina. Yeah, this was always fun. I love chatting with you. Um, anyone can find more about me and what I do at strengthrunning.com. The Strength Running Podcast is also in Apple Music, Spotify, Stitcher, all the normal places. And yeah, those are the two things that I'm, you know, kind of putting all my time and energy into right now. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I'd love to connect with any of your audience, your listeners who might have questions for me. Uh, but yeah, I've started the podcast or the website and go from there. Great. Thank you so much. Thanks, Tina. My friends, if you have a minute and you could leave a review on your favorite podcast player, Apple Podcasts, aka iTunes, Stitcher, Overcast, Pocket Class, Spotify, or whatever else podcast player you use to listen to this podcast, or if you would subscribe to this podcast, you will help me get out in front of new runners to make our tribe even bigger and even better. It might not seem like you as one person can make a difference, but really it helps a lot. And it shows me you appreciate the hard work I put in for those. Thank you so much. I hope that was a helpful episode. It was interesting just how many people reached out and asked me about the same kind of topic. And it is something that I hadn't really thought about up to this point. That being said, I'm not really in the right frame of mind to think about much during my early uh, Chloe days. But I wanted to make sure that this was addressed and we covered it in lots of different ways to make sure that we were fitting the situation that you could be in. I love doing those episodes with people where I get to discuss your questions and we get to kind of talk it through. And I think Jason was the perfect person to go through this with. If you haven't already checked out his Strength Running podcast, you absolutely should. If you enjoyed my episode with Justin Sewer, which I know many, many of you said that was your favorite, go to listen to Jason's episode with Justin. He's also had him on his podcast and it was another great episode. I don't think Justin is capable of doing a bad episode or bad anything really, but really enjoyable. So go check that out. You can get links to everything we talked about today in the show notes by going to tinamuir.com forward slash episode 204. And remember, if you are postpartum or if you are about to have a baby, I have a strength training workout for you by going to tinamuir.com forward slash postpartum workout. Now, I am very excited to tell you just a little bit about a series I have coming up starting in October, which will be an Eco Challenge series. If you have not watched the TV show Eco Challenge on Amazon Prime yet, go watch it. I have interviews coming with some of the featured teams. I'm really excited because every team I reached out to about this said yes. So I have all the people that I want on the on these series and I'm looking forward to sharing their stories with you. So be sure to go watch Eco Challenge if you have not already watched it, the world's toughest race. 
And uh, yeah, my friends, have a wonderful week and I will see you next Friday. Thanks for listening to the Running For Real podcast. Be sure to check out tinamuir.com for show notes and even more helpful running information.